This is not just a forest. It's a graveyard, frozen in time. The dead trees here are not victims of age. Disaster drowned them. Earthquake killed these trees, but it wasn't from the ground shaking. It was from the ground suddenly dropping six feet. Centuries ago, the ground suddenly collapsed. A massive earthquake ripped through the Pacific Northwest. Moments later, a towering wall of water swallowed the land. The largest earthquake that's happened in the U.S. that we're aware of was along the Cascadia subduction zone. But for years, this deadly event remained a mystery. No witnesses, no written records, only silent clues buried in the earth. The last time one of these great earthquakes happened, the answer is 316 years ago, on the night of January 26, the year 1700. Scientists from around the world followed these clues. What they uncovered was shocking. This is the story of how they solved a 300-year-old earthquake mystery. Setting the stage, Cascadia's dangerous beauty. The Pacific Northwest is a place of wild beauty. Towering forests, endless coastlines, and quiet rivers stretch as far as the eye can see. But beneath this peaceful surface, something dangerous is waiting. The region sits on the Cascadia subduction zone. Here, two massive tectonic plates push and grind against each other. The Juan de Fuca plate slowly slides beneath the North American plate. This battle happens in total silence. No one feels it, no one sees it, but stress builds deep underground over time, like a ticking time bomb. When the pressure becomes too much, the earth snaps. In an instant, the seafloor shifts, Mountains of water rise and race toward the coast. Waves taller than houses crash onto the land, destroying everything in their way. These are not rare accidents of nature. They are part of Earth's natural cycle. Scientists now know these megaquakes strike the region every few centuries. How much stress is building up in between the tectonic plates? How often do we expect earthquakes to occur? Um, what kinds of things affect the likelihood of an earthquake? The last one hit over 300 years ago. That means the clock is ticking once again. People living here today are standing on shaky ground. The past disaster was huge, but the next one could be even bigger. The clues beneath our feet. For a long time, the great quake of Cascadia was just a story. Native tribes spoke of a powerful shaking and giant waves that swallowed their villages. But without written records, many thought it was just legend. Then, scientists began to look closer at the land itself. What they found changed everything. Along the coast of Washington, they discovered something eerie. Forests of dead trees still standing, their roots buried in salty mud. These trees didn't die slowly. They drowned. The land had dropped so fast that ocean water rushed in and killed them. It was as if the earth had suddenly pulled the ground beneath their feet. They called these places ghost forests. Each tree was a silent witness to disaster and the soil told the same story. Layers of sand brought by ancient tsunamis were trapped between layers of earth. It was clear something violent had happened here. Four inch layer of fine grained sand. Now what is that sand doing here? It's a tsunami deposit. But the big question remained, when? The trees were dead, but they held a secret inside their rings. The mystery of when the earth shook still had to be solved. The soil tells a story. One scientist, Brian Atwater, was determined to find answers. He believed the ground itself could reveal the truth, so he began to dig. Along riverbanks and coastlines, he sliced through layers of soil like pages in a history book. Each layer told part of the story. What he saw was stunning. He found thick layers of dark, rich soil in old forests and marshes that once thrived. This, was, this had evidence for di from diatoms for three meters of, of land level change. And but above them lay something different, a sharp, sudden layer of sand and debris left by a monstrous tsunami. It was as if nature had turned the page in an instant. This wasn't slow erosion. This was violent and fast. The land had dropped several feet and a wall of water had rushed in. Brian knew this meant a mega quake. He could see the moment frozen in the earth but he still didn't know the year it happened. Still, he was close, closer than anyone had ever been. The soil had told him what had happened and how it happened, but it could not tell him when. For that, he needed help from someone who could read time written in wood. The trees. Whisper the date. 
That's when Brian Atwater turned to a man named David Yamaguchi. David wasn't just any scientist, he was a tree detective. More precisely, he was a dendrochronologist, someone who reads the history of trees through their rings. So my name is David Yamaguchi, and I was uh, the Dimensions Fellow in Research, and I worked at the University of Iowa. Every year, trees add a new ring as they grow. Some rings are wide, from good years. Others are narrow, from hard times. Together, they form a natural timeline. Brian showed David the dead trees from the ghost forest. These trees had died suddenly, their last rings frozen in time. David had an idea. If he could compare the dead trees to the living ones nearby, he might be able to line up the patterns of rings and figure out exactly when the trees stopped growing. He worked carefully, matching ring after ring, like puzzle pieces fitting together. Slowly, the picture became clear. The patterns in the ghost forest matched the healthy trees up to the late 1600s. Then, the dead trees ended. No new rings appeared. The quake had killed them. David narrowed the date to just after the 1680s. It was an incredible breakthrough. For the first time, scientists had real evidence of when the Great Cascadia earthquake struck. But the final proof would come from a place few expected across the wide, open Pacific Ocean. Preparing for the next big one. Now that the mystery was solved, an even more urgent question demanded attention. What happens when Cascadia shakes again? Scientists are united on this. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Using data from the 1700 megaquake, they have built models of what the next event could look like. The results are terrifying. The next Cascadia earthquake could reach a magnitude 8 or even a devastating 9. The violent shaking would stretch from Northern California all the way up to British Columbia. Cities would crumble under the force. Roads would split open. Power lines and water systems would fail within minutes, leaving millions in darkness and desperation. But the earthquake itself is only the beginning of the disaster. What follows is even deadlier. A giant wall of water, taller than a five-story building, would rise and charge toward the coast. In some places, people would have as little as 15 minutes to flee before the tsunami arrived. And it won't be just one wave. There will be many, coming in relentless succession over several hours. Thankfully, scientists have not let these warnings go unheeded. They've turned lessons from the past into life-saving models. These models predict where the waves will hit hardest, how far inland they will reach, and which areas are safest for escape. This research isn't just academic, it's a roadmap for survival. With every second counting, these warnings could be the difference between life and tragedy. But the clock is always ticking. Engineering solutions and community action. Learning about the danger is just the beginning. The real challenge lies in what we do next. Along the Pacific coast, people are no longer waiting for disaster to catch them by surprise. They are taking action, making plans, and building the tools they need to survive the waves when they come. One of the most inspiring stories comes from the Shoalwater Bay Tribe in Washington State. The Shoalwater Bay Tribe is one of the smallest in the state. Their village once stood directly in the path of a future tsunami, but instead of ignoring the risk, they faced it head on. With determination and teamwork, they built something extraordinary the first vertical evacuation tower in the entire country. Rising 50 feet into the air, this tower is strong, tall, and sturdy enough to hold about 400 people. In the chaos of a tsunami, it will serve as a beacon of hope, a safe place above the floodwaters. But they didn't stop there. The tribe is also relocating their village to higher ground, far from the reach of the sea. They've secured over 4,000 acres of safer land to build a future for their community. Their actions are powerful, and they've inspired others. Across the coastline, more towns are following their lead. They are designing better escape routes, practicing emergency drills, and constructing new towers. Every step, every plan, brings more hope. The message is simple, but urgent. Nature will strike again. But if we prepare and work together, we can turn survival from a hope into a reality. The Earth remembers everything, in its soil, in its trees, and in the stories passed across oceans. The truth of the past waits for those who seek it. Scientists uncover the mystery of the 1700 megaquake, not just to solve history, but to save lives.
The ground may shake again, but we'll be ready this time.